Hi there, it's nearly December. All our dahlia tubers have been dug up, cleaned and put into storage for winter. This is the seventh and final episode of our dahlia diary. In this episode, Jess is going to show you how he's prepared the tubers for winter storage and also how he's got some dahlia seeds ready to sow for next year. It's the 7th of November and the seed pods that have been hanging up in the greenhouse for a couple of weeks are going brown now. So I'm going to take them down and take them into the house to dry off thoroughly. Before I took them into the house I took off all the stalks and also some of the outer layers. So this is what I'm left with. I'll take these into the house and let them keep drying for a few more days. On the 8th of November I decided it was about time I started digging the dahlias up. There was a spell of good weather on its way so I thought I'd better make hay while the sun shines. Here I am taking off the stalks. Because I've cut them ha halfway down they're a lot easier than they would have otherwise been and they're certainly a lot less messier. So it's just a question of digging up each tuber one at a time. Remembering to make sure that the label comes along with the tuber because otherwise we would be in a mess at the end of the season trying to work, identify which tuber is what. Make sure you're about a spade's depth, width from the tuber so you don't go cutting through the tubers in the ground. So there you are, that's not a bad looking tuber. And I've got the label in the hand and sticking it straight into the mother tuber, last year's tuber that uh, this plant grew from. That way I won't lose it on the way to the greenhouse. And I wanted to show you also that all the stalks go onto the compost heap. I smashed them up with a pair of shears so that they will rot down over winter because this, this is going to be the, the engine for next year's plants. The compost is going to be used next year and it, so it's important that it rots down over winter. So smashing it up like that helps the process. And as you can see, I'm now mixing it. I've been out on the road, the, the, the local streets, and picked up all the leaves from under the trees that have dropped off. And I mixed that in with the, in the, with the dahlia stalks to make a very rich compost. My father taught me many years ago that before you start chopping the tubers up and ready to store them for the winter, it's best to take them into the greenhouse to dry them off. To do that, it's best to turn them upside down so that any water in the stems can leak out. It took me about a week to complete the digging up process. And as you can see, they're all in the greenhouse now, drying off. And in a few days time I'll start taking off the, the uh, mother tubers and cutting off the excess shoots etc so that they're ready for winter storage. I must admit that while I was digging them up quite a lot of them looked pretty small. 2022 was a very warm summer and I, and I, I was thinking to myself that the summer had affected the size of the tubers. It was only when I took a look at this video which are made in November 2021 that it made me realise just how much the, the hot weather had affected the size of the tubers this year. There's the same number of tubers, they're just smaller this year. Here's the next of the last seedling to come out. Not very exciting I'm afraid. Now, while the big tubers are drying off a bit I'm going to turn my attention to the pot tubers that is all the little plants that have been growing in pots 
all summer long. There's about 150 plants here, if I remember rightly. Because the weather's still warm, I'm going to try to keep them going a little bit longer, but I'm going to reduce the heights. Look at the thickness of the stalk on this one, even though it's only growing in a three inch pot. Well, that's it, all the dailies are now in. Still one or two salvias to, pick, uh, to pull out. Now the only dahlias left in the ground are these, the seedlings. I'm going to leave these in a bit longer in the hope that the tubers get bigger so that they overwinter. Still waiting for this last one to come out properly. This is the only one now that's not flowered. I'm now going to start cleaning the tubers up, ready for winter storage. To do that I've got several tools. Perisecutors, an ordinary pair of scissors, a pair of bonsai scissors for getting to the parts that the other scissors can't reach a plastic dibber that's good for getting the soil off and finally a brush that's sometimes used for cleaning off the loose soil so I'm going to make a start on this tuber and the first thing I'm going to do is to remove all the excess dirt so that I can see what I'm doing better now the aim of all this is to only store the parts of the tuber that are going to be useful next year in producing new plants. So therefore I'm going to remove anything that's not going to be useful such as all these root hairs and also the mother tuber. I'll start with removing all these loose hairs. So that's cleaned it up a bit. Now the next job is to remove the mother tuber. The mother tuber is the tuber from which the plant grew this year it's only going to rot and it will certainly not help it won't produce any more uh, shoots next year so it needs to be removed now the mother tuber tends to be darker and softer than the rest of the tubers I hope you can see that this one's definitely soft in fact it's more or less rotted away but that was probably the one that it, that this plant grew from this year but there's also this tuber here it's got a telltale sign of little piggyback tubers on the end there. That quite often happens with the mother tuber over the summer. That one's quite soft too, so I'm going to remove that. So I've now removed that, and that's all the remnants of the couple of little mother tubers. That'll go on the compost. Now removing that tuber has, has created quite a wound on the bottom of, this, of the crown here. So I've decided that I'm going to put some sulphur powder on this which will help it uh, stop it from rotting over the winter. Now I don't use sulphur very often. I've had this pack for years. I tend to only use it on wounds that I'm not sure of whether I've got all, this, all the bad stuff out. Let's hope it does the trick. Finally, I'm going to remove most of the old stalk just to leave about an inch above the crown. Because the stalk is, is some more material that's possibly going to rot over winter, so get rid of it. And finally, reattach the label. I always use polypropylene string for attaching the label because the polypropylene string won't rot in the over winter. Right, I've had the seed heads in the house for a few days and they've now dried out. As you can hear. So it's time to start pulling them apart to see if they've got any seeds. I'll start on this one which looks a bit like a hedgehog. It really is just a question of pulling the seed head apart and seeing what you find. You tend to find that the seeds seem to accumulate in the middle of the seed of the seed pod rather than rather than on the outer edges. So there's one. Another. Third one. Whereas this is another seed pod. And there's nothing at all in that one. 
but this one's got more. They're a bit like human beings, really. Some people produce no, none at all, others pop out three or four at a time. Right, so that's the job complete. I've got about 15, 16 seeds from some large dahlias that are trying to cross, cross, but I've got probably well over a hundred seeds from those ball shaped dahlias, the five dahlias that of similar shapes that I had in a row and I've crossed them and got well over a hundred seeds. I'm going to leave these, leave these to dry out for another couple of days and then I'll put them in these envelopes keep them in, a, in, a, in a, an airtight place and then around February time I'm going to put them into the fridge for a, a few weeks prior to sowing them in the greenhouse. I read somewhere that keeping them in the fridge for a few weeks convinces them that they've had a winter and they're more likely to germinate. I did this last year and the, and the, the germination rate was pretty good so I'm going to do the same again. I hope you can see the mother tuber on this one. It's darker, wrinklier, and it's got more roots on the end. Well, there it is, removed. I've cleaned the wound up and that should heal in a couple of days, skin over. This is the absolute last of the 2022 seedlings to come into bloom. As you can see, it's yet another pink cactus. The stem's a bit weak, but there again, it's the 15th of November. I can't expect anything better, I don't suppose. So I'll probably keep this one for next year and give it a go just to see what happens. I think that this tube is quite interesting. It's one of the biggest that I dug up this year. When I started to clean it up, I realised that the mother tuber was right underneath. And there it is. That is the mother tuber. Now all these small tubers around it have grown just from the mother tuber. There's no way that that's going to produce any shoots next year. It'll just rot and the whole thing will fall apart. So I've cut it off. And as you can see, it's left a big wound underneath. Now there is a danger with crowns as big as this that they will rot from the inside out. So I'm going to drill a hole right the way through the middle. I hope you can see, you can see right through it. And finally I've dusted it with green sulphur to try to stop any rot spreading. The last deal is I've got, I'm going to dig up are the seedlings which I've left in the ground till the last minute to make sure that the tubers are as big as they can possibly be for winter. So here are all the tubers from the seedlings. In total I'm keeping 17 for next year to see how they grow next year. I'm, I'm sure I'll discard some after the second year but some of them did look pretty good. And the biggest tuber that I got was this one. To think that that's grown from a seed this year it's pretty impressive I think. So there they all are now they've been cleaned up. It didn't take long to do it because they're all new seedlings, they had no mother tubers to remove, so it didn't take long. So I've now completed all the cleaning up work, and as you can see, the pile's considerably smaller than when I started out. Now the pot tubers that are brought into the garage are still going strong, but it's the 23rd of November, and I think it's about time I put them to sleep for the winter. To be honest, I've had enough. So first I'm going to remove all the foliage and the stalks. So there we are, all the stalks removed. I'll now give these a couple of days before I put them into storage. That will give the stalk wounds enough time to heal over. 
It's the 25th of November. The time's come to start putting the dailies away. So I've built my wooden box and lined it with cardboard. And I'm going to store the tubers in potting compost. I've got two sorts, one that's got peat in it and this sort that's peat free and I'm going to mix the two. By the sound of it, next year I'm not going to be able to buy any peat compost so I better start using some peat free so I'll start this time by mixing the two to see how we go. Now I'm not telling you that potting compost is the right medium to store daily tubers in. Lots of people use different ways. People, some people use vermiculite or perlite, others store them in sand. And some people don't use anything at all, they just store them under the staging in the greenhouse and hope that they, they survive the cold winter. All I can say is that potting compost has always worked pretty well for me. So there's some of the peat free compost. It always reminds me of the contents of a vacuum cleaner. And there's the sort with peat in it. And there are the two mixed together. That's a bit on the dry side. I like to keep the compost slightly damp so that the, the tubers don't dry out over winter. So I'm going to put some water in this. So I've wet it slightly now. And I've now lined the bottom of the box with some compost. There are three main reasons why a dahlia tuber wouldn't, would not survive the winter. Firstly they could dry up because it's too warm or they could get wet and rot or finally the frost could get to them. Now between now and next, next March it's unlikely to get very warm in the greenhouse. It might get cold because there's no heat in the greenhouse so the cardboard and the wood of the box will help protect them from the frost. By putting some compost at the bottom of the box that should help stop the frost from getting in underneath. So we're now ready for the first layer of dahlia tubers. So there's the first layer of tubers. I left a bit of the gap, a bit of a gap between the tubers and the, and the cardboard so that I can get more compost down there to make more insulation. I've left the tubers so that the crowns are at the top, that is to say they're all facing upwards. Because if there's a warm spring, they sometimes start to sprout. And if they're upside down, they would end up doing a U-turn, which wouldn't do them much good. So there they are, the first layer of, of tubers now covered up with some more compost. So we're now ready for a second layer of tubers. Second layer done. And covered with compost. After that there were three more layers. So there are all the taller growing dahlias nicely tucked up. It just remains to store the tubers of the dwarf dahlias such as the Art Decos and the Art Nouveaux. Last year I stored them in boxes so that I didn't have to tag each individual tuber and it worked quite well so I'm going to do the same again. So there they are, all the way in the box, ready for winter. Now I've obviously used quite a lot of potting compost there, but it won't be wasted because of course I'll be growing the tubers in this potting compost again in the spring. So it just remains to put a lid on the box. That should do the trick. At last we've reached the last task of the season and that's to put the pot tubers away. All I do is put them in this big cardboard box lying on the sides. Because the tubers are surrounded by compost within the pots there's not, there's not much real need for extra insulation but I'm putting this sand on in with them as well just to make sure. By the way I have checked all the pots to make sure there's a tuber in there. I don't want to be storing pots that just got compost in. And I think that this is the biggest one that I've found, the biggest tuber. Can you see how it's distorted the pot? There they all are, tucked up in bed. And final job though, I do like to make my dahlias comfortable for the winter. I've been doing this since 2010. We had a very cold winter that year and the frost got into the box. 
I lost quite a few tubers, particularly those that were close to the sides of the box. So since then I cover them up with old duvets. I'm a barmy? Possibly. I'm a daily helic? Definitely! Hope you've enjoyed watching our videos this year, learnt something and had a smile. It's happy days for me, Christmas shopping here we come. Thank you very much for watching and a happy Dahlia growing 2023. In the meantime, here are some pictures of the new Dahlias that Jeff grew from seed this year. Merry Christmas!